In this video, we're going to see how to install Docker the right way. So sit tight. Since I published my Docker Media Server Guide back in 2018, I have received over a million views and thousands of emails. I plan to do a whole video series on this topic, but the first step is to have Docker installed on Ubuntu. For this tutorial, I'm using a fresh install of Ubuntu Server 22.04 on my Proxmox server as a virtual machine. You could follow the same guide if you have Ubuntu Server installed on a bare metal server or a virtual private server. In fact, my website is powered by Ubuntu Server 22.04 on DigitalOcean and I follow these exact steps to have Docker installed on my virtual private server. So let's begin. On the left, I have my Ubuntu server on Proxmox and on the right, I have my guide to install Docker on Ubuntu 22.04. We're gonna follow along the guide and I'm gonna explain the steps as we go, but there's one little thing that we need to do before we get started with installing Docker, which is to enable secure shell access. Why do we want to enable secure shell access? Because typing in the commands through the web interface of Proxmox is not easy. For example, I cannot copy paste commands. And this is probably the case if you're doing the same thing on a virtual private server because your command line interface is going to be available through a web console. So let's enable SSH access so we can use a feature rich SSH client and remotely connect into our server. To do that, we have to edit the SSH configuration file. So sudo nano slash etc slash h slash hd config. We're not going to be focusing on the security part of SSH today. There's a lot of different things that I recommend that you do, which is like using authenticated keys. So if you're new to SSH, I recommend that you look into that information and maybe one day I will publish a separate video on this topic. But for today, we're going to just enable the port number, which is 22, save the file by pressing Control X and then Y and then enter. Now we've saved it. Now let's restart SSH for the settings to take effect. sudo systemctl restart SSH and that's it, we're ready to go. Now let's switch to my favorite SSH client which is Mobaxterm. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so it gets a boost from the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel so you get notified of all future videos. On our website, we published an article on 30 really good SSH clients that are available for Windows. Here's the link to the article if you're interested. I highly recommend that you check it out. Maybe you won't like Mobaxterm like I do. Maybe there's something else that rings a bell for you better than Mobaxterm. But for now, we're gonna use Mobaxterm. We'll create a new session. We're gonna create an SSH session. Ooh. I do not know the IP address of the server that I want to connect to. So let's go back to the server's web console here. Then I'm gonna use a command ifconfig and this is gonna spit out a bunch of different things. So ENS18 is the ethernet port, ethernet interface and the IP address on that one is 192.168.1 dot two one two so that's the interface that we're going to use so let's connect one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot two one two we're going to spit the name which is my name and we're going to leave the port number to 22 which is the default port so let's hit connect and this should connect now this logged me in straight away because i have already connected to the server once if we're gonna do it for the first time, you might have to type in your password, you might have to agree to connecting to a new machine that your SSH client does not recognize. We skipped all of those steps because I've already connected to the server once before. So we're there, 
where the command line interface of our server remotely from our SSH client. Now we're ready to install Docker and we're gonna follow along the guide. If we scroll down to the table of contents, we're gonna see Ubuntu Docker installation alternate methods. This is important because for a period of time, I was installing Docker the wrong way. It's not really the wrong way. It's not, it's not the recommended way. Today, I'm gonna to show you what I think is a better way to install Docker. So if we scroll down to that, uh, this section here, you're gonna see you could install Docker from the Ubuntu repositories. You could install Docker by downloading the .deb package and installing it on your server, or you could use the installer script. All of this is fine. There's also the snap repositories where you could install Docker from. All of these are fine, but the way I do it is that I install Docker's official repository on Ubuntu and pull the latest Docker package and Docker Compose package from those repositories. The advantage here is that you're gonna get security updates faster than from the Ubuntu repositories, which are usually a few versions behind. So let's scroll down and start installing Docker on Ubuntu. In this guide, I do go through what is Docker or the basics of it, how it's different from a virtual machine. Um, I, frankly, since I started using Docker, the installation of applications on my server have become a breeze and with Docker Compose, I can move the whole stack from one server to another and be up in a second or in a minute uh, or in a few minutes. Um, so since 2018, I've stopped installing apps directly on my server. Docker is the only way I do it. And on my GitHub repository, you can find all the applications that I use today on my server, home server, on my web server, on Synology, everything is out there, so feel free to check it out. Here's the link to my GitHub repository. So let's start installing Docker. The first step is to update your server. So sudo apt update update. This is going to refresh the packages that are available in the repository now again we haven't installed the docker repository yet which is what we're going to do but before that we also need to install a few dependencies or prerequisites you could copy paste the command these are all in my opinion some basic packages that you should have in your ubuntu server you may already have it there's nothing wrong in rerunning the command if you don't have any of the packages from the list above it's going to be installed so now we've, we're done with installing the prerequisite packages the next step is to add the docker repository to our apt sources once again now we're using the curl command here which is the reason why we installed curl in the previous command so we're going to copy and paste the command here what this is doing is downloading the key to access the repository securely. So let's do that. Now we've installed the key to access the Docker repository securely. The next step now is that we can install, we can now install the repository, which is this step right there. So copy paste. So we're going to install the Docker repository here and we're going to link it to the key that we already installed. So our system uses the key to access the Docker repository securely and install the latest version of the Docker package. So, so the repository is now installed. We need to update the packages one more time. So sudo apt update. Now this is going to refresh all the packages. If you didn't install the key, you're gonna see an error message at this point saying that you don't have the key to access the repository. And so you'll have to go back and reinstall the key and update the packages one more time before you proceed. Now we're ready to install Docker, which is sudo apt install docker ce. You may see that in some guides, the Docker package is referred to as Docker 
ubuntu.io this is the name of the package in the ubuntu repository remember we're not installing from ubuntu repository which is what i was doing previously and not anymore we're going to install docker community edition docker ce from the official docker repositories so we're going to do that now i want to bring your attention to a few things here the first thing is that take a look at this docker compose plugin in the older versions of docker you had to install docker compose manually in the new versions it's built in as a plugin so when you install docker the later version of docker compose is also installed as a plugin so let's press yes and install it while it's installing i do want to bring your attention to something if you're on synology Synology Docker packages are a few versions old and so Docker Compose is not available as a plugin inside of Synology. You would still have to follow the manual steps. Here's the link to that guide. Feel free to check it out, but that's a point to be noted. Now the last step is to really check if Docker and Docker Compose have been installed. So let's do that. So sudo system ctl status docker so we're going to check the status of the docker package and here we see active great so it's running so we're going to escape out of this we're going to see docker version this is going to spit out some information here it shows that we have docker 20 3.0.1 install great now you you are seeing a permissions denied error here it's because i didn't use sudo so let's do sudo docker version and you're going to see a lot more information now when you have the right access then we're also going to check if docker compost is installed so sudo docker compost version if you install Docker Compose manually, you would be using Docker hyphen Compose version. Now we're using the Docker Compose plugin, so Docker Compose version, and this is going to show the version of Docker Compose that's installed. 2.16 is the latest version of Docker Compose. So that's it, we have Docker and Docker Compose installed. As I said before in this guide, I also show the manual way to install Docker Compose. So feel free to check it out. But down below on the same guide, I also have a list of few important commands, Docker and Docker Compose commands that I recommend that you know. Few important ones being sudo docker start container name, stock container name, sudo docker compose starting our stack and sudo docker compose down to stop our stack. So feel free to check it out. These are some important commands that you need to know before we start following the rest of the videos in this series that will come out later on. Thank you for watching this video. See you in my next video.